Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson. We're going to put into practice the terms that we learned from the last video lesson and are now going to apply them to an actual problem that we're going to graph. So for number one, f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 3. Just by instantaneously looking at this problem, you know two things. One is that it is an x squared. So if it's, if it's x squared, you know that this is a quadratic function, which quadratic functions are always u-shaped. So you know that right off the bat, which is valuable. Another thing that you know right off the bat is that your a value is a positive number. It's a positive 1. So if it's positive, you know it's going to open up. So because you know it's going to be u-shaped and because you know it's going to open up, you automatically have a picture in your brain. Okay, as I graph this, I know it should look something like this. If you get something like this, you've done something wrong. Or if you get something like this, you've done something wrong. Or if you get something like this, you've done something wrong. So that's a, a nice check as we're doing these problems. All right, so the very first step that we're always going to start off by doing is we're going to find the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is found, I didn't write this on the PowerPoint side, which I should have, a negative b over 2a. So we're going to find the axis of symmetry by putting in a negative b. Here's a, here's b, and 3 is c. So a negative, negative 6. A negative, negative 6 over 2 multiplied by our a value. And our a value is a positive 1. So simplifying this, Obviously, minus a minus 6 is a positive 6 over 2 times 1, which is 2. So our a value is 3. And here's how I always want you to write this. 6 divided by 2 is 3. The line of symmetry is exactly that. It is a line. So make sure that you label it as a line. A line, which in this case is vertical, vertical lines always have an x equals equation. So if you just give me the axis of symmetry is 3, I'm going to take off half a point because what you've given me is not a line. Make sure you write down x equals 3. Then I will give you full credit. It has to be that x equals because we're talking about a line. So I'm going to be very, very picky about that. Make sure you put x equals 3. All right, you found the axis of symmetry. Now let's find the vertex. To find the vertex, you put in the axis of symmetry, which is 3, into the x values. So you're going to put that in for here and for here, and then you're going to find your corresponding y value. So f of x, which is another way of saying y. y equals x squared, which x is now the number, 3. 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. Evaluate this, and you will get the vertex because you're going to get that y value. So 3 squared, 9, minus 18, plus 3. 9 minus 18 is a negative 9. A negative 9 plus 3. Y equals a negative 6. So now, class, I'm going to be very picky on this. If you say that your vertex is a negative 6, I'm going to count that incorrect. That is not your vertex. Your vertex is an xy ordered pair. So your vertex is going to be the x coordinate of the axis of symmetry, which is 3. And it's going to have a y coordinate after you substitute in that x. So the y coordinate is a negative 6. So I want to see this for your vertex. To be clear once again, make sure for your axis of symmetry, you have an x equals line. For your vertex, you have an xy ordered pair of 3, negative 6. So we're going to put in that 3, negative 6. Go right 3 and down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's also good to put in the axis of symmetry, and that's always written as a dotted line. So put that axis of symmetry in by having that dotted line. So that vertical line, that red line is the axis of symmetry. That's kind of like our mirror, as we've talked about, that mirror. So when you fold the parabola, the two wings, as I call them, should come right on top of each other. Maximum or minimum value. Um, let's do that after we graph it. We're now going to graph it. And the way I feel most comfortable, you guys can put this in your calculator if you wanted to. 
you can put this right into your calculator and then you could look at the table you could plot points or you can use the patterns which is what we're going to use here that's the way I feel is the is basically the quickest it's the most efficient my a value is the number in front of x squared which is a positive one so if it's one I'm gonna go right one up one or up one right one up one right one there I put a dot from there I go up three right one so I go up one two three and to the right one and this is enough for me where you can now follow the line up also you're gonna go up one left one because these are always symmetrical and you're gonna go up one two three left one so now you're gonna make the vertex connect through these two points and you're gonna draw it as it goes up and to the left so as you can see if you were to fold this parabola hopefully these two wings right here would fall right on top of each other if you were to fold them over this red dotted line so now let's be clear about this here's what I expect from you on a test I expect to see five points for these I expect to see the vertex two points on the right side of the parabola and two points on the left side of the parabola you do all that I will give you full credit as we do this for a test question now getting on to the maximum maximum and minimum values before I get on to that I actually want to say one more thing if you ever want to check your work which is a great idea to do what you have done here class is you've given five different points that satisfy this equation going up to the start you've given five points that satisfy this equation if one of these points doesn't satisfy it you've done something wrong so pick any one of these five we'll just do this once we'll pick it with that point it is right one two three four five down two my point that I'm gonna pick is five negative two because it's on my graph it should satisfy this equation so my y coordinate is a negative two is that what happens when you take five and square it minus six times the x coordinate which is five plus three this would make thirty right here a negative thirty a negative thirty plus twenty five is a negative five a negative five plus three is a negative two and what do you know boom there's a negative two so as you can see this point satisfies this equation the same would be true of this point, the same would be true of this point, the same would be true of this point, and the same would be true of this point. I'm not saying that you have to check your work class. You don't have to do this. But for those of you who want to do that on a test, I think it is an excellent idea. Now we'll get on to the maximum minimum values. You know that this goes up, so it's not going to have a maximum value. It has a minimum value. Here's how I want you to write the minimum value. The minimum value is the low point and the low point going up and down so your y coordinate it's going to be your y coordinate is what your minimum value is going to be it's going to be a minimum of what is that y coordinate it's down one two three four five six it's a minimum of negative six and what i want you to write is i want you to put when that occurs so it's when x equals a positive 3. So this is what I want you to write for a maximum or minimum value. For quadratics, you're only going to have either one or the other, not both. It's going to be either a maximum or a minimum. For this one, it's a minimum value of a negative 6. When is that? When x is a negative 3. Or when x is a positive 3. So please write it just like that. Whew! Last thing we have to do. We have to say our domain and our range. We do this with every function that we talk about in this class. So it gets easier and easier with each function that we do. So the question that we ask is if we take out this vertical line, this helps us know what our domain is. Our domain. When we take this vertical line, okay, are we touching an x value and when do we stop touching an x value? So right here, does my green dotted line intersect my graph or my black line as you can see it does not however it's understood that these continue to go up and to the left 
up and to the left, up and to the left, up and to the left. Also going up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right. There is no limit upon which x values you can put in here. You can put in your x value of a negative 1,000, and you would still get a y value. So you could do the same thing for a positive 1,000. If that is the case, then your domain is from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Or it would be all real numbers. So for your domain, I always like to start off with interval notation first. Your domain would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And remember, negative infinity and positive infinity always have the parentheses around them. So what would the domain be for set notation? It is all of the real numbers. So you say this x such that, and it's x such that x belongs all real numbers. You're going to have this squiggly here, bracket, squiggly bracket over here. So now for your y, or your range, for your um, um, set and interval notation. You're going to have a horizontal line, and with this horizontal line, do you see any y values down here at negative infinity? No, you do not. It does not intersect your graph until you get to that minimum point, which is right there at a negative 6. So once you're at a negative 6, when do your y values stop? They never, ever do. Because those two lines continue to go up and up and up forever and ever and ever. So your range starts at a negative 6. It can equal a negative 6, so we bracket that. It equals a negative 6 when x is 3. So it can equal a negative 6, so we bracket that. And how high does it go? It goes all the way to positive infinity. Positive infinity, we close that in with a parenthesis. So for our set notation, what can our y values be? y such that y isn't all real numbers. It's only the numbers that are above negative 6 or greater than a negative 6. And not only greater than, but greater than or equal to. Because we have this bracket right here, it's greater than or equal to. So you need that line underneath the greater than sign. We close that in with brackets. And that is what I expect of you. So these problems are quite lengthy, and they're going to be worth a lot of points on a test. First, find the axis of symmetry. With the axis of symmetry, find the vertex. Plot those five points on this graph. With the graph, tell me what the minimum or maximum value is going to be. And then finally, look at the graph to tell me what the domain and the range is, both in set and interval notation. Whew! All right, you guys give it a shot. You guys try number two, pause the video, unpause it, and check your work with mine at the end. All right, as you've done this on your own, you found out that you should get a parabola that goes down, correct? When x is a negative 1, and when you know x is squared, <laughs> sorry, when, when x is squared, you know it's a parabola, and when you know your a value is a negative 1, you know that it's a parabola that opens down. So you found your axis of symmetry by going a little bit of this. x equals a negative 4 over 2 times a negative 1. So a negative 4 divided by a negative 2 is a positive 2. So your axis of symmetry, x equals a positive 2. At this point, it might not be a bad idea to put in that axis of symmetry. At 2, you know that this is going to be that fold line if we were to consider this as being a piece of paper. Your vertex, you find that by substituting. So instead of y equals a negative x squared plus 4x minus 1, it's y equals a negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 1. So now be very careful, class, with this negative sign. This right here, a negative x squared, is very different than saying the quantity negative x squared. A negative x times a negative x is a positive x squared. But this, because there's no parentheses here, you have to assume that it's this. x squared then multiplied by a negative 1. 
So make sure that you put the 2 in the parentheses without the negative sign because you're going to end up multiplying that by a negative 1. So we now have, we'll do that right now, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4. Some of you doing it on, on your own, you might have got a positive 4 here. So make sure that you make that change. Plus 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 1. A negative 4 plus 8 is a positive 4. Positive 4 minus 1 is 3. So y equals 3. However, that is not your vertex. Your vertex is an xy ordered pair. So that vertex is at the point when x equals 2 and y equals 3. So at right 2 up 3, there is going to be your vertex. You know, and this is me one thing that I should have stressed a little bit more in one of my earlier videos or else earlier on in this video, if your a value is negative, all of these ups just turn to down. I should have stressed that, and I apologize for not doing that class. All these ups just turn to down. Okay? So if A is, is positive, you go up all these numbers. If A is negative, the patterns remain the same, except instead of going up, you go down. So if my A value is a negative 1, which it is, you're going to go down 1, right 1 from your vertex, down 3, right 1 from that next point. Same thing going down and to the left because it's always symmetrical. It's down 1, left 1, down 3, left 1. Connect these dots. Oof, that was ugly. Connect these dots. See if I can do a better job. It's better. And that is what I require of you on these graphs. So those five points. Maximum, minimum. This one is not going to have a minimum. It's going to have a maximum value. So uh, we have a max of what y value is that? That y value is 3. A max of 3. At what time? When x equals 2. So make sure you don't forget this part. This is very important to me. Okay? Tell me at what x coordinate is that maximum or minimum value. And then lastly, the domain and the range. So if we look at this one again, this continues to go left, this continues to go down and to the right. So my domain is all real numbers, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then for our range, our range these continue go, to go down forever and ever and ever. So if we were to have this horizontal line, it's touching, 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 all the way from negative infinity, all the way up until that. Because now right here, it's not touching any green. So it's not touching my graph. So it stops at 3, when my y value is 3. So my range, it starts at negative infinity. That always has a parenthesis that comes before it and it stops at 3. It can equal 3, so because it can equal 3, you put a bracket around that. So then for the range, y such that y is everything that is less than or equal to that positive 3. And there's your bracket. And that is how you graph those. So uh, one more time as a summary, the axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. Then find the vertex by substituting. After that, put it on your graph. I expect to see five points. The vertex, two points to the right, two points to the left. I also expect to see the axis of symmetry in a dotted line. After that, find your maximum or minimum value. It's not going to be both. It's going to be one or the other. And end it by telling me what the domain and the range is in set notation as well as interval notation. Let me know if I was not clear about any of those directions, but all of those things I expect to see on a test.